Hey everybody, welcome back to some more early morning barking, talking about BPD and MPD by somebody that has both. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and do all the socially things scrolling past you on the screen right now. Thank you to everyone that supports me on Patreon. And in fact, thank you to all of you because at time of recording this, yesterday I hit a thousand subscribers and that's absolutely awesome. And it's, it's you lot that did that. So thank you ever so much. So... Today, I want to do a bit of a follow up on the events of the last video. If you haven't seen the last video, go and watch the last video. If you can't be bothered to watch the last video, essentially what happened was I spent about a week in a narcissistic rage that was bubbling under and it, it basically ruined my week. Uh, to put it lightly, I mean, honestly, for more details, go back and watch the video. It's called something consumed with rage something like that i forget i'll put a link in the description below anyway i'm now not in rage and this post rage period is a a good thing to talk about as it said failure isn't the falling down it's the staying down and i just fell down and now I'm at a point where I can choose to stay down for a bit or I can choose to get back up and carry on. And at first, this was very hard. This is a, this is a difficult thing to do, right? It's easy to want to stay down. It's easy to feel beaten, to feel like you failed, to feel like everything you've done has been for nothing so far. I went all that way up and just fell back down again. So what's the point? And it's important to remember that if you stay down, then it's over. You're the only one who gets to decide when this is done, right? When are you done fighting against these traits that you have, this person that you are but don't want to be, when do you give that up? No one but you decides that. That's that's entirely down to you. And so this desire to stay down, to feel beaten, to let it all just pile on top of you, there's so much I could feel bad about right now. And I don't need to feel bad about any of it. I've learned lessons. I'm actually stronger now because I've had another experience to learn lessons from. I found another situation where I react really, really badly. And I can plan out for that situation happening again. I'm better now. And I don't mean in terms of I'm not feeling bad anymore. I mean in terms of I am better now. I am a better person than I was because that happened. And so I don't want to stay down. I've been down. Down sucks. And I'm in the process now of getting up again. But I've been doing this a while, right? I've been going at this a while and I'm, I'm used to the trips. I'm used to the falls and the stumbles and the scuffed knees. And I will keep getting up because every time I get up, I stay up for longer. And eventually I think it might be so long between trips that it's as if they're just not happening anymore. And maybe it's still possible. Maybe that that's the thing that's around forever, right? Maybe I'm not curing this maybe i'm just halving it every so often i'm dividing by two constantly and and this thing within me is getting smaller and smaller and smaller but never actually quite going away but the smaller it gets the easier it is to handle the the easier it is to grab it and stop it from freewheeling away and knocking me down but if i stay down 
If I sit and wallow in this, I, I could just sit and feel bad about myself. You know what makes that easier as well? This is physically draining. Have you realized that? Have you, have you really taken the time to appreciate how getting this angry for this long is physically devastating? I am shattered. I am in sleep deficit. I am broken. My muscles ache. I feel like I've been tensing up for a week and a half because I kind of have been. And I need time to shake those knots out. But not wallow in it. Not go, well, I managed to do that thing I always do. What's the point in getting up again? Well, getting up again is that thing I always do. Sometimes doing that thing you always do isn't a bad thing, is it? Only if that thing you always do is a bad thing. <laughs> That's hardly a psychological revelation right there, is it? But hey, we have these trips. We have these falls. We hurt our knees and we cry. And sometimes we want that parental figure to come and pick us up and tell us it'll all be all right. And the sad truth of adult life is that sometimes that parental figure isn't coming. Sometimes you've got to pick yourself up. And maybe it's better to not need that parental figure as an adult. I mean, you're not supposed to, right? That's, that's kind of the whole adult thing. But it's doable. With self-care, with a bit of self-belief, you can pick yourself up. You can brush the dirt off, do it all again, keep going, because what choice have you got, really? Anything else is unacceptable. So we're going to get up and try again because I don't know what else I'm going to do. It's, it's kind of that simple, isn't it? You've got to keep trying. You've got to keep on and look at what you learned from what you did. And if you didn't learn much, you at least got a new situation to practice, right? I found this thing that other people can do that makes me get that angry. So the next time I encounter it, I will have a plan, right? I will have decided ahead of time how I'm going to deal with that problem. So it won't happen again. <laughs> or will it? Is it going to happen for a... <laughs> Only time will tell, right? I just need to encounter this situation again. But I am definitely better armed now. I have tools in my box that I know will deal with this situation. So, okay, I fell, but I'm getting up. And I'll fall again, but I'll get up again. And I'll have more tools when I do it. Easy as that, right? That's all therapy is. There you go. I just cured you. You take care. I'll see you later. Bye.